The night was dark, the kind of darkness that feels almost suffocating. I had been driving for hours, trying to make it home after a long business trip. The monotony of the road was only broken by the occasional flash of headlights from an oncoming car. My eyelids felt heavy, and I was fighting to stay awake. I decided to take a shortcut, a road less traveled, to shave off some time. That decision would change everything. The road was narrow and winding, surrounded by thick woods on either side. The trees seemed to loom over the road, their branches reaching out like skeletal fingers. The only sound was the hum of my car's engine and the crunch of gravel beneath my tires. I turned on the radio, hoping for some company, but all I got was static. I fiddled with the dial, but it was as if the world outside had disappeared. As I drove deeper into the woods, a thick fog began to roll in, reducing my visibility to almost nothing. I slowed down, straining my eyes to see the road ahead. Suddenly, I saw a figure standing in the middle of the road. I slammed on the brakes, my heart racing. The figure was a woman, dressed in a white gown, her long black hair covering her face. She didn't move or make a sound. She just stood there, staring at me. I rolled down my window and called out, Are you okay? Do you need help? But she didn't respond. She just kept staring, her eyes hidden behind her hair. I felt a chill run down my spine. Something wasn't right. I decided to drive around her and continue on my way. But as I tried to move, my car wouldn't start. I tried again and again, but the engine just sputtered and died. I was trapped. The woman began to move towards my car, her movements slow and deliberate. I locked the doors and tried to start the car again, but it was no use. She was now right outside my window, her face inches from mine. I could see her eyes now, black and empty, devoid of any emotion. She began to whisper something, her voice soft and haunting. I couldn't make out the words, but they sent shivers down my spine. Suddenly, she was gone. I looked around, but she had disappeared into the fog. I tried the engine again, and this time it roared to life. I didn't waste any time. I floored the gas pedal and sped away, not looking back. I finally made it to the main road, the fog clearing as I left the woods behind. I pulled over, my hands shaking, trying to process what had just happened. I took out my phone to call for help, but there was no signal. I decided to drive to the nearest town and find a place to stay for the night. As I drove, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. Every time I looked in the rearview mirror, I half expected to see the woman standing there staring at me. But there was nothing. Just the empty road behind me. I finally reached a small town and found a motel. I checked in and locked myself in my room, trying to calm my racing heart. I turned on the TV, hoping to distract myself, but all I got was static. I turned it off and lay down, hoping to get some rest but sleep wouldn't come. Every time I closed my eyes, I saw the woman's face, her black eyes staring into mine. I could still hear her whispers, echoing in my ears. I felt trapped, like I was in a never-ending nightmare. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door. I jumped up, my heart pounding. I looked through the peephole, but there was no one there. I slowly opened the door, but the hallway was empty. I closed the door and locked it, my hands shaking. I sat on the bed trying to calm myself, but the feeling of dread only grew stronger. I felt like I was being watched, like I was not alone. I turned on the lights, hoping to chase away the darkness, but it didn't help. Suddenly the lights went out, plunging the room into darkness. I fumbled for my phone using its light to see, but as I looked around, I realized I was not alone. The woman was there, standing in the corner, her black eyes staring at me. I screamed, but no sound came out. I tried to move, but I was paralyzed with fear. She began to move towards me, her whispers growing louder and more insistent. I closed my eyes, praying for it to end. And then, everything went silent. I opened my eyes, and I was back on the road, driving through the fog. The woman was gone, and everything was as it had been before. I was alone, driving through the night, trying to make it home but I knew I would never be the same again. The road less traveled had changed me forever. Just stood there, watching. 
Feeling a pang of unease, I sped up, eager to put distance between us. But a few minutes later, I spotted him again, standing further down the road, his stance unchanged. My heart raced. How could he have gotten ahead of me so quickly? I pressed the accelerator harder, trying to shake off the growing dread. The radio, which had been playing soft melodies, now emitted a low, static-filled hum. I reached to turn it off, but the dial wouldn't budge. The static grew louder, morphing into a series of whispered voices, their words indecipherable, but their tone menacing. Glancing in the rearview mirror, I gasped. The man was now in the back seat, his face still hidden in the shadows. Panic surged through me. I swerved, the tires screeching against the asphalt, and the car skidded to a halt. I fumbled with the door, my hands trembling, and bolted out, not daring to look back. The night around me was eerily silent. The only sound was my ragged breathing and the distant hum of the car's engine. I began to run, my footsteps echoing in the stillness. Every shadow seemed to move. Every rustle of leaves sounded like footsteps. The whispered voices from the radio seemed to follow me, growing louder and more insistent. Suddenly, a beam of light cut through the darkness. Another car was approaching. Desperate for help, I waved my arms, trying to flag it down. The car slowed, and relief washed over me. But as it drew closer, my heart sank. The driver was the same man, his face now illuminated by the car's interior light. His eyes were hollow, and a twisted smile played on his lips. I turned and ran into the woods, the underbrush scratching at my legs. The man's laughter echoed behind me, sending chills down my spine. I could hear him following, his footsteps deliberate and unhurried. After what felt like hours, I stumbled upon an old, abandoned cabin. The door was slightly ajar, and I slipped inside, hoping to find a place to hide. The cabin was filled with dust and cobwebs, the remnants of a life long forgotten. I hid behind a tattered couch, trying to control my breathing. The door creaked open, and the man stepped inside. I could hear him moving around, searching. The whispered voices were now all around me, their words still indecipherable, but their intent clear. They were hunting me. As the man drew closer, I spotted an old rusty knife on a nearby table. Summoning all my courage, I lunged at him, the knife aimed at his heart. But he was faster. He grabbed my wrist, his grip like iron, and twisted the knife out of my hand. We struggled, the whispered voices growing louder, urging him on. But I was fueled by adrenaline and fear. With a final desperate push, I managed to knock him off balance. He fell, hitting his head on the edge of the table. He lay still, the twisted smile now replaced by a look of surprise. The whispered voices fell silent, and the oppressive weight of the night lifted. I stumbled out of the cabin, the first rays of dawn breaking on the horizon. My car was where I had left it, the engine still running. I drove away, the events of the night replaying in my mind. The road stretched out before me, the promise of a new day ahead. But I knew I would never forget the nocturnal pursuit, the whispered voices, and the man with the hollow eyes. And as I drove, I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was still being watched, that the night held more secrets than I could ever imagine. The night was unusually dark, the kind where even the stars seemed to have hidden away. I had been on the road for hours, driving back from a friend's wedding in a remote town. My GPS had died hours ago, and I was relying on an old map and road signs to guide me home. As the hours ticked by, fatigue began to set in. My eyelids grew heavy, and the road ahead seemed to blur. To keep myself awake, I turned up the radio, letting the soft tunes fill the car. That's when I saw a sign for a shortcut, Old Holloway Road. Thinking it might save me some time, I took the turn. The road was narrow and surrounded by thick, looming trees. Their branches hung low, almost as if they were trying to reach out and grab my car. The atmosphere felt heavy, and an unsettling feeling settled in my stomach. I tried to shake off the feeling, telling myself it was just fatigue playing tricks on my mind. As I drove further down the road, the radio began to crackle slowly being replaced by static. I fiddled with the dials, but it was no use. 
The only station I could pick up was broadcasting an old song, one that sounded eerily familiar. The lyrics sent chills down my spine. Beware the road you take, for some paths are meant to break. Suddenly, my headlights flickered and went out. Panic surged through me as I tried to turn them back on, but they refused to cooperate. I was plunged into complete darkness, with only the faint glow of the moon to guide me. I considered turning back, but something told me I'd come too far. As I continued to drive blindly, I began to hear whispers. Soft, hushed voices that seemed to come from all around me. They spoke in a language I couldn't understand, their tones filled with urgency. The temperature in the car began to drop, and I could see my breath in the cold air. Out of the darkness, a figure appeared on the road. I slammed on the brakes, my heart racing. The figure was that of a woman, dressed in tattered clothes, her face hidden by a veil of long, matted hair. She stood still, her arms outstretched towards me. I considered driving around her, but something told me that would be a mistake. Instead, I rolled down my window slightly and called out, Are you okay? Do you need help? The woman slowly lifted her head, revealing hollow eyes and a mouth that seemed to be sewn shut. She pointed further down the road and then vanished into thin air. Confused and terrified, I continued driving, hoping to find an exit or another road that would take me away from this nightmare. But the road seemed to go on forever, with no end in sight. Suddenly, the car began to sputter and came to a stop. I tried to restart it, but the engine was dead. I was stranded in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by darkness and the haunting whispers. I decided to get out of the car and look for help. As I stepped out, the cold air hit me, and I realized the whispers were louder outside. They seemed to be coming from the trees, their voices filled with sorrow and pain. I began to walk, hoping to find someone or something that could help me. But the road seemed to stretch on endlessly, with no sign of civilization in sight. The whispers grew louder and more insistent, and I felt as if I was being watched. After what felt like hours, I came across an old, abandoned house. It looked like it had been there for centuries, its walls crumbling and windows shattered. Despite its dilapidated state, it seemed like my best chance for shelter. I cautiously entered the house, the door creaking loudly as I pushed it open. Inside, the air was stale, and a thick layer of dust covered everything. I explored the rooms, hoping to find a phone or some form of communication. But the house was empty, save for old, faded photographs on the walls. As I looked at the photographs, I realized they were all of the same woman, the one I had seen on the road. In each photo, she looked sad and lost, her eyes filled with pain. Suddenly, I heard footsteps behind me. I turned around to find the woman standing there, her hollow eyes staring into mine. You shouldn't have come here, she whispered, her voice filled with sorrow. I backed away, my heart racing. Who are you? What do you want? The woman looked down, tears streaming down her face. I am trapped here, bound to this road and this house. I tried to warn you, but you didn't listen. I looked around, realizing I was trapped in the house. The doors and windows sealed shut. The whispers grew louder, and I could feel the weight of the woman's sorrow and pain. I'm sorry, I whispered, tears filling my eyes. I didn't know. The woman nodded, her eyes filled with understanding. You are not the first to come here, and you won't be the last. But maybe, just maybe, you can help me break God. this curse, only to be trapped by the woman's spirit. Together we searched for a way to break the curse, to free the woman's spirit and all those who had been trapped over the years. And as dawn broke, we finally found the answer. The sun rose, casting a golden light over the road and the house. The woman's spirit was finally free, and with her, all those who had been trapped over the years. I found myself back on the main road, my car waiting for me. The old Holloway Road was gone, replaced by a field of wildflowers. I drove away, grateful for the second chance and the lesson I had learned. Never take shortcuts, especially on dark and lonely roads. For some paths are meant to be avoided, and some spirits are best left undisturbed.